It's a huge release from Adobe and Microsoft, and we've got one O'Day in the wild. Let's talk about it in the Patch Report. Hello everyone, I am Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness here at Trend Zero Day Initiative and our unofficial Patch Wrangler. And we are here to talk about Patch Tuesday once again, which was a little late this month. Uh, I don't know if they had problems releasing stuff or if they just like to keep people waiting, but it's a huge release from Adobe and Microsoft. Let's go ahead and jump into the Adobe stuff right away. 12 different bulletins, 54 CVEs, bunch of products. Um, and I do want to point out that it's unusual for Adobe to have anything above priority three. We have priority one in Cold Fusion. Uh, obviously, Cold Fusion, a lot of servers, 15 CVEs in that. So definitely want to take a look at that. Although they say none of the CVEs are under active attack. So that is good. Then we've got AEM, which is After Effects Manager Forms or something. Uh, that's a priority two. Uh, they aren't new CVEs. They're just taking up dependencies from a third party and really introducing them there. And Commerce is also marked as priority two. So again, nothing under active attack, but Adobe saying, hey, maybe pay a little bit more attention to some of these than the others and uh, take a look at that. Everything else is going to be priority three, and they are critical bugs. They do, but they're primarily open and own sort of bugs. So definitely go ahead and take a look at those. Photoshop is obviously going to be a big one, one CVE there, uh, just because Photoshop. And uh, yeah, that's, that's about it for the... Uh, Adobe release, again, big, but not too scary. Microsoft, on the other hand, 124 CVEs. Whew, that's a lot to go through in the standards components. Uh, but also I want to point out Windows Hello. I haven't seen that a lot. BitLocker, OpenSSH, and LDAP. That is going to be a big one. So let's get into the exploited one. This is a CLFS, Common Login File System Elevation Privilege. Microsoft is now saying that this is being used in ransomware. Uh, so yeah, definitely take a look at that. It's just a privilege escalation on its own. So it's obviously going to escalate the system and then you're going to run your ransomware, which runs it now system. So it takes over your whole system. Uh, these LDAP ones are a little frightening. Uh, they allow remote unauthenticated attackers to execute code at elevated systems by sending a specially crafted LDAP message. No user interaction. Those things add up to wormable. Um, and LDAP, as you know, can run on everything. And the patch is not available for Windows 10. So if you're using that, probably don't. Um, but so there's going to be tons of targets out there. This is one you're really going to have to focus on for patching. So definitely take a look at those, test and deploy that quickly. Then you've got some remote desktop services. Uh, the RDP, we know that's always out there. This is specifically for the remote desktop gateway role though. So if you have this gateway deployed, again, it's no user interaction. Sending a message to an affected server triggers a race condition, but hey, we see race condition exploits all the time in the wild. So if you have to leave this open to the world, please consider IP restrictions at least. And then finally, there's this really interesting one here that I wanna talk about, the Kerbro Security Feature Bypass. Um, because this is in virtual based security, uh, it's gonna take a little bit more actions than just applying the patch. So you take a look at that document that's linked there that leads to a Microsoft document telling you how to do this. Obviously, this is a local attack since it's Kerberos, but you could leak Kerberos credentials. So that's bad. Um, but yeah, so this is one that's really interesting. It's in a newer security feature and it requires extra steps for actually addressing it all. So sorry, folks, have fun with that one though. Then we look down here at the table, which is nice and tabley this month. No problems here. Uh, I do want to point out a couple other ones as we move down here into the remaining critical bugs, because there's some interesting office bugs to talk about. And this, these are frustrating to me uh, just because of the inconsistency. So um, we have these bugs. Well, that's an interesting little, little typo error there. I'll have to figure out the formatting on that. We have these bugs in Office and Excel. They list preview pane as the attack vector, but they also say user interaction is required. Which, which, which is it? Because if the preview pane is really an attack vector, there should be no user interaction. So if you discount that, these bugs get much closer to CVSS 9 plus than the whatever they're listed at right now. And if you're using a Mac like I am, you're out of luck because there are no Mac updates 
for Mac 2021 and 2024. <sighs> so yes, we're playing the waiting game, waiting for exploits to hit before or after the patches are actually available. Yikes. Um, there's a Hyper-V bug here, but it relies on in, uh, authentication and social engineering. I don't see that as a big deal. Uh, there's a very scary looking TCP IV bug, but hang on. Um, it centers around DHCP v6, and the attacker has to respond to a very specific DHCP, DHCP v6 query with a crafted response. Now, it's usually a machine in the middle sort of thing, um, and I would love to see some more details on how this worked. Hopefully, the researcher will publish some uh, details later. But yeah, this one, I mean, I have mixed feelings about it because it could be really bad, but I just don't see the attacker being in a real spot where they could really take advantage of it. It seems very unpredictable and unreliable. So maybe relax a little bit around there. Moving on to uh, other code execution bugs. A um, lot of office bugs this, this month. Uh, these are the ones that are not preview pane. Uh, and then there's the bugs in RS and telephony. They seem to be in every, every release these days. I have yet to see one of these bugs actually be used in a while. And then there's another SharePoint bug. Um, we got two bugs in SharePoint, two different CVSS scores. Both say site owner permissions are required for exploitation, but one marks that as uh, high privileges, one marks that as low privileges. I think it's low privileges because site owner is given to anyone who has permission to have a new site on SharePoint, and that's usually everybody. Um, so I, I don't know. Speaking of inconsistencies, there's another RDS gateway bug identical to the two already presented, um, but it's listed as important instead of critical. Don't ask me why. I have no idea. It's literally the same description, same CVSS score, even the same researcher that reported it. Yep, I don't know. Bunch of privilege escalation bugs, and we've already seen the privesc being used in the wild. And again, most of these just lead to system level code execution or administrative privileges. They threw me off because one of them says, well, actually two of them say, leads to root. And I'm like, how, how do you get root on a Windows box? But I forgot Microsoft makes stuff for Macs too. So yes, root in the case of the Microsoft auto update for Mac. There you go. Um, there are some notable exceptions. Uh, the Azure bug is DLL loading. Uh, that could be used in an enclave. That's interesting to see. Uh, also nice to see Microsoft do this. The digital media bugs allow for executing code at medium integrity. Normally you're only executing at low integrity, so this allows you to update. That's kind of cool um, th that they're fixing it. I mean, the bugs are whatever, but it's cool that Microsoft fixing it. Speaking of cool, uh, there's one that is in Secure Kernel, uh, and that is a newer security feature. And as far as I know, this is the first bug that really impacts Secure Kernel. So a little coolness there. Um, Okay, now we need to discuss this one a little because there's an EOP in System Center, but there's no patch because Microsoft says no existing System Center customers are impacted. But in the spirit of consistency, as I note, Microsoft also notes that only customers who reuse existing System Center installer files to deploy new instances are affected. So they are affected or not affected. I, I don't know which. The problem here is there's not a patch. So Microsoft recommends that you download all of these files that are the latest version. They're all linked in the bulletin and reinstall uh, these files, the installer setup files. So no patch. If you're running System Center, you've got some work to do. So definitely take a look at that. Lots of security feature bypasses this month, and you can usually tell what they are just from the title. The BitLocker bug bypasses BitLocker. Mark of the web bypasses Mark of the web. Uh, so there's not really anything interesting beyond this one. Um, there's the virtual based security VBS enclave that allows uh, attackers to bypass a security feature locally. That's kind of interesting. Um, again, Mac users are waiting for a patch for OneNote and for Word. And Defender, uh, yeah, bug in Defender that allows stuff to run that it normally shouldn't. Uh, info disclosure bugs are usually unspecified memory context, uh, contents. Um, there are some that lead to disclosure of sensitive information for whatever your definition of sensitive information is. Uh, the Azure local cluster bugs lead to tokens, credentials, resource IDs, SAS tokens, all of those things. Uh, that's definitely bad. Um, 
Dynamics Business Central could allow an attacker to recover passwords from clear text passwords from memory. That's the sort of information disclosure I show up for. And uh, the NTFS bug allows authenticated attackers to disclose file path information. Not as serious, but definitely something to look at. Uh, Microsoft, can we talk about DOS bugs for a minute, please? All We have 14 DOS bugs, and they all say an attacker could deny service over network to that component. Well, for how long? Does it blue screen? Do you have to reboot? Does it stop when the attack stops? The world may never know. Because Microsoft doesn't seem to want to tell us. Couple spoofing bugs this month, low severity, Edge on iOS, which if you're using Edge and iOS and running multiple browsers at the same time, you are a unique individual. And I'll just say that the important bug in Windows Hello just states that unauthorized attackers could perform spoofing locally. Uh, they don't really say how, but since it's hello and spoofing, I'm assuming that you would spoof a different user. But that's, uh, that's just speculation on my part. And that brings us to the end. Our, our next Patch Tuesday is going to be in May, and I'm going to be in Berlin for Pwn to Own Berlin. But fear not, I will be back uh, broadcasting from my uh, hotel room or some other place in Berlin, uh, possibly with a pretzel. Bavarians know their pretzels, so yeah, that's pretty good. Although Bavaria's South Berlin. Anyway, I will be back, and we will be back to talk about all the patches at that time. So until then, stay safe, and may all your agreements be smooth and clean.